Hi, Movie Chronicles here. Today, I'm going to explain an American crime thriller movie called Brawl in Cell Block 99. Bradley is a former boxer. Nowadays, he works in an auto repair shop. Used to. He gets fired from his job because the owner can't afford to keep him anymore. Sadly, Bradley arrives home, only to find his wife, Lauren, behaving strangely. He sees a hickey on her neck, so when he starts checking her phone, Lauren admits she's been having an affair. Man, talk about a shitty day. Bradley angrily sends Lauren into the house, after which he wrecks her car. Once he's calmed down, he goes and talks to Lauren about her affair. She admits that she doesn't love the other person and only did it because she felt lonely. The two of them talk about it for a while and decide to give their marriage a chance with proper communication. Bradley says that he will transport drugs for a friend so they have more money to live a better life. 18 months later, Bradley has now been transporting drugs and earning lots of money. He and Lauren drive a better car and live in a bigger house now. Lauren is also pregnant with their baby. Their relationship has gotten much better. One day, Bradley's boss, Gil, invites him over and introduces him to a new business partner, Eliezer. Bradley is paired with Eliezer's men to run a package. On the way, things get tense as Bradley throws away the men's guns because he does not trust them. The three of them take Gil's boat out to sea to take their supply. Once they are out to sea, one of the men goes underwater and retrieves a trunk full of drugs. They take the drugs from inside it and sail back to shore. Bradley tries to dump the drugs now so they can pick them up later. But Eliezer's men are impatient. They beat him up and take the drugs right away. As they're leaving, they are ambushed by some policemen. Bradley does not want to get involved, so he is about to leave. But Eliezer's men might reveal the drug deal, so he goes back and shoots one of them dead. Then, he knocks out the other one. The police immediately take Bradley into custody. The detective tries to get the name of Bradley's associates for a lighter sentence. But, Bradley does not talk and does not rout out anybody. Later, Lauren comes to visit him, and Bradley asks her to take care of herself and the baby. He thinks he'll be put in prison for seven years. Lauren promises to wait for him, no matter what happens. At the hearing, Bradley is sentenced to seven years in a medium security prison. Bradley begins his sentence, and he is shown around the prison by another prisoner called Lefty. Bradley is given a single cell, where he angrily punches the walls for getting seven years instead of five. Later that night, one of the guards, Andre, tries to annoy him, but Bradley remains calm and quiet. Back at his home, someone attacks Lauren. Lauren tries to fight them off with a gun, but they use tranquilizers to put her to sleep. Then, they abduct her. The next morning, a prison official tells Bradley that Lauren is going through some difficulties with her pregnancy and her doctor is coming to meet him. Bradley goes to talk to him, but it's not really Lauren's doctor. He is called the Placid Man and works for Eliezer. Eliezer has abducted Lauren because Bradley killed his men and he also lost $3 million in the drug bust. Eliezer has also brought in an abortionist. The Placid Man says that Bradley can prevent all of that if he kills a man in another prison, which is maximum security. The target's name is Christopher Bridge in cell block 99. Since Bradley is here in another prison, he is supposed to do something that will get him to the other maximum security prison. So, when going back, Bradley gets into a fight with Andre in the tussle. Bradley manages to break Andre's arm. After that, some more guards arrive and take him to the holding level. On the way, he attacks the other guards as well, and all of them work together to bring him down. Soon after, Bradley is transferred to the maximum security prison, which is infamous for mistreating the prisoners. There, he is greeted by Warden Tugs, who is hard-headed and extremely strict. Warden Tugs warns Bradley that he has no issue with taking away all of his freedom, or even killing him if he acts out of order. He makes Bradley change his clothes and also investigates his cavities right there in the open. Bradley is taken to his cell, which is an absolute shambles compared to the one from the other prison. The toilet is clogged and gives off a bad odor. The walls are chipped and the window is small. Bradley ties his shirt over his mouth to ward off the odor. Later, he is taken to the prison yard for some fresh air. One of the other prisoners shows him around the place. Bradley asks about Christopher Bridge, but Derek does not know anybody by that name. So, Bradley asks about Cell Block 99. Derek says that the prisoners from Cell Block 99 are isolated from the rest of the prison because they're child molesters, rapists, and straight-up psychotic. So, Bradley decides to go into Cell Block 99. For that, 
he picks up a fight with the other prisoners and beats them all up. Bradley has to be stopped by the guards themselves. They approach him, but attacks them too. So, Warden Tugs himself puts a gun to his head and says that he is going to cell block 99. Cell block 99 is hidden from the rest of the prison behind a pantry. The inside is an old dungeon with extremely unfavorable living spaces. Warden Tugs says that cell block 99 is a prison within a prison. There, they tie a belt to Bradley's waist, and Warden Tugs uses a remote control to put him in shock and pain. He says that Bradley will have to bear that pain every time he misbehaves. Finally, Bradley is taken to his room which is even worse than the normal ones upstairs. There is no toilet, the bed is rotten, and the floor is full of broken glass. On top of that, his legs and arms are chained all the time. Elsewhere, the placid man takes some more pictures of Lauren. He brings the abortionist with him for a preliminary examination. Lauren starts whimpering and crying, but the placid man reveals no emotion. He simply says that it's sad Bradley and Lauren were not smart enough to protect their baby. Back at the prison, Bradley asks the other prisoners about Christopher Bridge, but the prisoner says that there's no one in there by that name. Immediately after, the stun belt is used on him putting him in a lot of pain. He is taken out of his cell, and the guards use the belt on him again. After that, the guard says that some of the other prisoners wish to talk to him. Bradley is taken to meet with these prisoners, but it turns out to be Eliezer himself and his men. The guards give the remote of the stun belt to Eliezer and leave. Apparently, the policeman found and arrested Eliezer. He lost $3 million due to the loss of drugs and the guy Bradley shot was Eliezer's brother-in-law. Since Eliezer is a rich man, he has these privileges inside prison. He lied about Christopher Bridge to get Bradley in here. The men beat him up until Bradley becomes unconscious. Later, Bradley is woken up by the stun belt. The guards give him some food to eat, which is absolutely terrible. After that, Bradley puts his shoe soles between his belt to ease the pain from it. When the guards activate the stun gun, it does not hurt him as much. The guards come to terrorize him some more and take him to Eliezer, but Bradley fights them off. He manages to take one of them hostage and demands the other guard to give him the keys. Once he gets the keys, he puts them inside his cell and unlocks his chains. After that, takes a baton and goes to Eliezer and his men. There, Bradley easily kills one of Eliezer's men. Then, he goes in to face the other two prisoners, one of whom was with him during the failed drug deal. Bradley is a tough guy and manages to fight them both off, but Eliezer picks up his phone and tells his men if they do not hear from him soon, they should kill Lauren and the baby. So, Bradley takes Eliezer's leg and breaks it. Then, he calls the placid man on the phone and makes him hear Eliezer's screams. So, Eliezer offers to release Lauren. He manages to stop the abortion just in time. Bradley tells Eliezer to send Lauren to Gill. Bradley then puts Eliezer in his cell. Warden Tugs arrives with some more guards, so Bradley hides behind the steel door and talks to him. He says that he's waiting for a phone call from Gill to confirm that his wife is safe. After that, he will hand himself over. If Warden Tugs should try to come in, Bradley will kill the guards he has kept hostage. Elsewhere, the placid man takes Lauren to Gill as promised and releases her. As they are trying to leave, Gill takes a rifle and shoots the placid man in the head. Then, Lauren takes the rifle from him and kills the abortionist. Then, Gill calls Bradley to confirm that Lauren is safe. Lauren then tells Bradley that everything is fine. She puts the phone at her belly so that Bradley can talk to his unborn baby. Bradley cries and prays that his baby will grow up safe and sound. Before Warden Tugs and the guards can come in, Bradley goes in and kills Eliezer. The warden arrives and sees the mess. He takes his gun and shoots Bradley dead. And here this gritty movie ends. For more unique and fascinating movies that you may not even have heard about, click on the videos on your screen. Also, do subscribe, like, and comment. Your one act will make a huge difference to us.